I think it's going to be one of the best investments that you will ever make into a luxury piece. They are just an amazing piece to have in your arsenal. Hey guys, my name is GPS and welcome back. Today we'll be going through some of our favorite luxury houses that we really often talk about on here. So brands like Chanel, Dior, and of course Hermes, just to name a few. And I'll be sharing with you my favorite piece from each house. And I have to say a big thank you to Michelle Wong for the inspiration. In case you're not familiar with Michelle, Michelle is a creator who reviews pretty much everything luxury and beauty. So everything from luxury makeup through skincare and hair care to fragrances. So if you're interested in any of those, then I would highly recommend that you check out Michelle's channel. And last week she did a video reviewing some of her favorite makeup palettes from some of her favorite brands, which I thought was just a genius idea. So today I'll be following in her footsteps. Last night I went through my collection and pulled my favorite piece from each one of the houses that we love and appreciate on this channel and I'll be sharing these with you today. So if you want to find out what pieces I ended up choosing, then please keep on watching. I'm sure at this point you will not be surprised to hear that my favorite designer house is Hermes. So I'll leave Hermes to the very end of this video, but in the meantime I would love to know if you could guess what my favorite Hermes piece is, you can go ahead and pause me here and please do let me know in the comment section what you think my favorite piece from Hermes is going to be, what's the ultimate piece that I couldn't or more like I wouldn't want to live without. I would love to know if you could guess the piece, but let's leave Hermes to the end and start with a brand that I have been sort of having a love and hate relationship with, which I know for a fact I'm not alone with, which is Chanel. I definitely go through phases, some days I love Chanel, others I don't even want to hear about them and look at their pieces. But even on days when I'm not in the mood to even look at anything Chanel, there is one category that I have to give to them that they are the best at, which is designer sneakers. I've mentioned this before, but in my opinion, no other brand comes even close to creating sneakers as flattering, as comfortable, and as stylish as Chanel sneakers. I have never tried a pair of sneakers from them that were not only ridiculously comfortable, but also unbelievably flattering. There's just something about the way Chanel puts a pair of sneakers together. They just always look streamlined and extremely refined. They are just the ultimate chic, effortless piece. You can dress them up or dress them down. You can style them in so many different ways. And I think there are very few Chanel sneakers that you could go wrong with. Most of their sneakers are flattering, easy to style, and are just a statement piece without you trying too hard. I think if there is one piece that Chanel knows how to do, it's their sneakers. There are very few pieces that I would not be able to recommend. It's usually their seasonal pieces that I'm like, I don't know how I feel about it because some of their choices of fabric can be a little bit odd. But if you go for one of their classic shapes and classic styles in a classic colorway, I think it's going to be one of the best investments that you'll ever make into a luxury piece. They are just an amazing piece to have in your arsenal and trust me they'll become one some of your most used pieces. I'm talking from experience. I do have a few pairs of Chanel sneakers, all of which I absolutely loved and used until they started falling apart. And if you watched my recent Chanel vlog, you may remember that I recently placed an order for a fresh new pair, which I honestly cannot wait for. I just love having a fresh pair in my collection because they are just so easy to throw on with any outfit that you're wearing. They are a no-brainer, they go with everything. You can dress them up, you can dress them down, and they are comfortable, which is quite a lot to say about a pair of designer sneakers. So I'm excited to have a new pair in my collection soon. And even though I've had this love and hate relationship with the brand, if there is one thing I will continue to buy from them is their sneakers because they are just honestly unmatched. Yes, I have an issue with the fact that they are increasing their prices, it seems like every other month, and at this point most of their pricing is just out of control. 
their sneakers is just something that I cannot stay away from. Next up, let's move on to Dior. And this was actually quite a tough one because there are quite a few pieces that I enjoy from Dior. One of them being their ready to wear. I have a few pieces of Dior ready to wear, all of which I love. I think their fun t-shirts definitely have a time and a place. And then they also have some more classic pieces that is really difficult to go wrong with. But if I think about the past year and what I enjoyed most from this brand and the one piece that I would really not want to be without, it has to be my Dior and Remova clutch bag. This is the so-called personal clutch, which was part of the Dior and Remova collaboration. Now, this is a bag that was, I think, among the first pieces that I ever unboxed on YouTube. And I have been loving and using this piece ever since I got it. It was a huge hit for me. This bag has really been the perfect bag for me in the past year. It fits everything that I need. It's fuss free. It's easy to use. You can just throw it over one shoulder or cross body. The strap that it comes with is incredibly comfortable and you don't have to worry about it. It's easy to clean. It's easy to maintain. It's just a fabulous bag. Now I mentioned this before that the only issue I had with this was the sort of the marketing and storytelling that they had surrounding this piece because before this launched, the hype was just out of control. If you ask someone at Dior, they would have told you that if you want to get this bag, you have to pre-order this. If you don't, there's no way for you to get it because it will probably be sold out within the first hour of it being launched. That wasn't the case. This launched a year ago and you can still buy this from both Remova and Dior. I'm pretty sure in most, if not all of the colorways that it was available in, which, you know, I'm sure that people working at Dior had nothing to do with that. Perhaps they overestimated the hype when they got information from the corporate office, or they just wanted to make it sound more limited than it actually was. Other than that, it's still something that is very much around, which I personally don't mind at all. I didn't buy this because it was limited. I bought this because I love the idea and the design. I think there are quite a few trunk bags out there, but this has to be one of the most modern and streamlined takes on a trunk bag, which I absolutely love. One more thing that I was kind of upset about when it comes to this bag has nothing to do with the bag itself. It has to do with the Remova and the fact that after this launched, just a few months later, Remova launched their own version of this, which is pretty much identical to this with a few differences, most of them being improvements. So Remova on their new bag improved on these little hooks, which you can use to attach the shoulder strap to the bag. As you can see, these are just sort of intact there. There's nothing you can do with them. There are these two metal pieces, which I personally would have appreciated if they were made of the same metal or, or if they were in the same tone as the bag itself. By now I'm kind of used to them and I kind of find them cute. They almost look like if the back had little ears. But I do wish you could sort of push them in or flip them down. Well, on the new Remova clutch, which is 50% less expensive than this, I'm pretty sure it's exactly half the price of this one. You can actually flip them down and they become flush with the side of the bag, which is a huge improvement in case you want to wear the bag as a clutch bag. It just looks a little bit more cohesive and streamlined, whereas if you want to take these off and use this as a clutch bag, you still can, but you'll have these pieces hanging out. And then they also made the Remova clutch bags out of this hardwearing plastic, which is a material that Remova uses for their suitcases as well. So it's not any less hardwearing than the metal that the Dior one is made of, which does make the bag a little bit more lightweight. However, because of that material that they use on those, they have a little bit more sheen to them, whereas the Remova Dior one is a little bit more matte. So there are a couple of differences, but when it comes to the aesthetic and the ethos of the bag, they are virtually identical. And then there are rumors out there that Remova will be launching their own take, their own individual take on a metal bag, which I'm not sure how that's going to work out because if they release this exact same bag just with the Dior logo, I think quite a few people out there, including myself, will be pretty upset because this was quite an expensive bag when this launched. But if I forget about all those little marketing details, I do have to say that I absolutely adore this bag. It's easy to use, it's spacious, it fits 
everything that you could possibly want. Let me open this because I have been wearing this for the past few days. So as you can see, I have all my stuff in here. I have a wallet in here, which fits in there perfectly. I have some additional cards, which I better take out before they fall out. And this is what the bag looks like on the inside. As you can see, it is so incredibly organized and compact. You have one, two, three, three larger compartments. You have a zip pocket in the middle. And then you also have, I believe six or seven slots for cards. You don't even have to use a card holder if you don't want to. It does have some dedicated spots for cards, which makes this just a perfect, easy to use compact bag. I just love this. It has been one of the best purchases I made in a while. Definitely in 2020 it has to be one of my best luxury purchases. But I have recently grown some new love and appreciation for this bag because even though I've been using this for the past year, I've been really enjoying it for the past couple of weeks when I was out and about running errands. And last week, in particular, this bag came very much in handy. I was running errands all day and um, I had my Hermes Finesse necklace on, which kept bothering me because I had a chunky mohair sweater on and it kept getting caught in the mohair. So halfway through the day, I just had to take it off and throw it in my bag. I ended up putting it in here and what I didn't realize that I must have forgot to close my bag at one point. And on my way home, this bag was wide open, which had never happened to me before. You don't have to worry about that because this bag is so easy to close. You just basically shut it and then you push these snap closures down and your bag is completely shut and safe is not going to come apart. But I must have forgot to do that. I must have been distracted by something. So I basically had this bag wide open on my side and on my way home, it just kind of worked its way downwards. And I had my bag hanging like this for at least 20 minutes upside down. And obviously my necklace was in there, my wallet, all my important things. And guess what? Not even one thing fell out of my bag because the bag is so well constructed that if you put something in the zip pocket, obviously it will remain intact. I mean, that doesn't say a lot, but I had some things in the card slots that were still in there. And even that tiny little necklace that I threw in, in this bag was still in the bag, even after it being upside down, because it is a true trunk bag. So it is constructed like a trunk would be. So it has these two sort of um, little shelves in here, which um, obviously is just the top part of the bag. So my necklace was sitting right in here and it didn't fall out, which was just a huge blessing. So really, I can only say great things about this bag. Even if it wasn't for that occasion, I would still have rave about this bag and would highly recommend it. But after that, I really think that this bag was worth the money. And even though Remova has a less expensive alternative of this, I still think it's an amazing bag to have in your collection. If you love Dior, I think this is a great piece to invest in. Not necessarily because of the Dior name. I don't think it's a bag that screams and shouts Dior, but I think this is a bag that you would truly be able to take advantage of on so many different occasions. The next brand is one that I really haven't talked about too much in the recent past. And that's because it's a brand that has pretty much been doing and pulling the exact same cards when it comes to their designs. They're a brand that has a really strong design aesthetic, which I think has become their downfall. And it is Saint Laurent. Now Saint Laurent is a brand that I loved for the longest time, but I feel I have kind of grown out of them. There are still a couple of pieces that I do really enjoy from them, however. One of them being the teddy jacket, which is a piece that I have talked about before. I have two of them right behind me, so I have the fur version over there. And then just over there in black, I have the wool version. But even though I still love those, I didn't want to talk about them again because I have talked about them so much before. So another category that I do love from Saint Laurent is their sweaters. And if you told me that I have to choose one brand and I'll only be able to buy sweaters from that one brand or even just ready to wear across the board, I would be perfectly fine to choose Saint Laurent. Because even though their pieces are not the hottest, most hyped things, the quality is always reliable and the designs are just something that I personally really enjoy. So I have one piece here that is a little bit more casual, which you have seen me wear it before. It's just this really simple casual sweater made of a cotton fabric that has the Saint Laurent branding over here. With Saint Laurent, you can find pieces that are a little bit more 
subtle, something like this that just has the initials over here. But then they also have pieces that are very much in your face. I tend to prefer these sort of designs. And you guys don't know this about me, but I'm absolutely obsessed with anything galaxy themed. So throw a couple of stars and a moon on anything out there and I can guarantee you I want it and I'll pay whatever it costs for me to have it in my collection. I love this. It's a piece that will never go out of style. I can throw this on today, tomorrow, in 10 years and it will look just as good as it did when I first bought it a couple of years ago. And there are so many different ways of styling this. So this is a more casual version of a Saint Laurent sweater. And then I have another one on in cashmere, which is actually a really similar structure to this. It is just a little bit formal because of, first of all, the fact that it's made of cashmere and it is a slightly different shape. This cashmere sweater is something that Saint Laurent does every single year. They only make this in black and it's been around for quite a few years. It is ridiculously soft. I mean, you can put this on a baby and I can guarantee even a baby would love this because it is just so soft and comforting. Obviously, you can buy cashmere sweaters for a fraction of the price of this, but it's really the details that make this sweater, in my opinion, worth the money. If you look here, this sweater has a really interesting construction to the sleeves. When you buy a sweater, you'll most often either find it to have just a regular sleeve or one that I believe is called the raglan sleeve, which I think ha is this one where the sleeve goes in at an angle. And this doesn't look the most flattering on most people, including myself. I find that this just kind of cuts off your shoulder and can make you look really narrow shouldered. And those sort of sweaters usually just kind of fall on you and they can drag you down sometimes. But the way this is constructed, there's just something truly special about it because it does have this really interesting seam here, which kind of bulges out. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it here. I'll come close up so you guys can really have a look at it. Because of that detail, there's just something about the way that this little detail adds more structure to the sweater. So yes, this is not going to be the most inexpensive cashmere sweater you'll buy. The way that this is constructed is really what you're paying for. It is something that you can always pick up from Saint Laurent. It's a classic timeless piece. It's only available in black. However, since Saint Laurent's creative director moved on to Celine, Celine has also come out with their own version of this, which is pretty much identical to this. The only difference is that the Celine one is in gray, whereas this one is in black. So if you ever wanted to get this in gray, you cannot buy it from Celine. Either one I absolutely love, so Saint Laurent sweaters and sweatshirts are something that I keep going back to and yes, they might not be the most hyped and coolest thing of the moment. They are just timeless pieces that I love having in my collection. And last but most certainly not least, let's move on to my favorite brand, which is of course Hermes. And I hope you let me know in the comment section what you think my favorite piece would be. I cannot wait to read your comments. And I'm pretty sure no matter what you said, you were right because there is so much I love from Hermes that anything could be my favorite. But I tried to narrow it down as much as I could. So I ended up choosing two extremely different pieces because these are the sort of things that I feel I would repurchase if I was to restart my Hermes collection. I absolutely love these pieces and I use them nearly on a daily basis. Let's start with the one that I have on my finger, which is the Shandong ring. This is a piece that I pretty much never part ways with. I do have quite a few Hermes rings, but this has to be my absolute favorite. And I get so many questions on Hermes fine jewelry that I am thinking about doing an updated fine jewelry video. I think my next video, which I think this one is going live on a Thursday, so I think my video that's going to go live on Sunday is going to be some sort of a fine jewelry video. I think it might be, I'm thinking I'm going back and forth if I should do an Hermes ring collection video or an Hermes, my top five, five fine jewelry pieces. I haven't decided which one it's going to be, but make sure that you subscribe down below if you're interested in fine jewelry, because my Sunday video I'm pretty sure is going to be on fine jewelry. I haven't filmed it yet, so that's why I'm not sure what it's going to be but I, it will have something to do with their rings because I've been getting so many questions, rightfully so, because there really isn't too much information out there that I really want to do an updated video for you guys. 
I do have a video sort of talking about the basics of Hermes Fine Jewelry, which will be linked up here, but I want to do a more in-depth sort of um, piece specific video. But sort of as a precursor for that, the Shandong ring is one that I absolutely adore. And the reason why I ended up choosing this over everything else is because I really don't keep any jewelry at home. I never have. So whenever I have this home, I'm just so happy to have it that I honestly never take it off. And when I have this with me, I really don't need anything else. I never think about getting anything else out or lusting after anything else. I'm perfectly happy to just have this. Whereas if I have something else at home with me, I always want to go and get this because I just appreciate this and enjoy this so much more than anything else out there. I just love this ring. I love it on its own. You can stack it with other pieces. You can stack it with diamond bands. You can stack it with inexpensive pieces to create a more impactful stack. And this will really just make anything that you stack it with. It's just such an incredible piece to have in your collection that for me, if I was to restart my collection, this is absolutely something that I would have to pick up at the beginning of my journey. I just love this. And then, obviously I had to pick something that is in the leather category from Hermes. Hermes is known for their leathers and it is for a good reason. And I was thinking if I should go for a bag or if I shouldn't, but I think these pieces are something that I use much more often than any one of my Hermes bags, which are my Cali wallets. I absolutely adore these. These are expensive, but they're expensive for a reason. And for me, they are 1000% worth the investment. They are some of the most amazing pieces, honestly, you can pick up from Hermes. They are incredibly multifaceted. There is so much you can do with these. You can use these as a clutch bag. You can use them as a wallet inside of a larger bag. You can use them as a crossbody bag, as a belt bag. You can use them as so many different things. I have a video talking about different ways of styling it. And I just absolutely love these. I remain to use these almost on a daily basis. I use these when I have a bag big enough to fit these, or I even use these sometimes just as a piece on their own. I just grab these and take these out as a clutch bag. I just absolutely adore them. They are larger wallets, so if you're someone who loves a smaller bag, you might not like these as an actual wallet, but I think you would really enjoy these on their own in that case. There's just something about the way they look that every single time I wear these, I get compliments, I get questions, people want to know what it is, because there's just something about the Kelly design that you just cannot quite put your finger on, but there really isn't anything quite like it out there. And they are just so well organized. So obviously they feature all the classic Hermes features that we love them for. So it has the Kelly flap, you have the hardware here, you get two sangles, you get the twist closure, and then the Hermes logo over there. And then on the inside, you have two larger compartments and then two sort of um, smaller pockets, one in the back and then one in the front. And then I believe I counted this before, I think you get 16 card slots in there, so you have plenty of space. If you need a larger wallet than this, I think you might as well just carry an entire ATM with you because this should fit everything that you could need. It is just amazing. I absolutely love these. I mean, the fact that I have three of them right here should tell you that I clearly have a thing for these wallets. I was once really into them. I don't think I would buy anymore because I have plenty to go around, but I just still love and use these to this day. They have been, I think, one of the best investments I've ever made. This was, I think this piece in particular was one of the very first larger purchases I made at Hermes, and it was one of the best decisions I ever made to pick this up because I have loved and used this for years and I continue to do so. So if you've been thinking about investing your money in something from Hermes that's not a bag, I don't think you have to look any further because these are just incredible. And this actually concludes my video on all my favorite pieces from some of my favorite brands. I feel like there must be some brands that I missed because these really, I didn't talk about that many brands I feel. If there are any brands that I missed that you, you would love me to touch on, then do let me know in the comment section. I can do maybe a part two talking about brands that I forgot to mention here. 
And please absolutely let me know in the comment section what pieces are your favorite, which are the pieces from any one of these brands that you couldn't or wouldn't want to live without. I would love to find out. And if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.